What's up, everybody? It's your favorite straight-looking gay boy, Hunter Avalone here, and welcome back to another episode of I Got Put on an FBI Watch List. Today, in the midst of the cuties controversy, we'll be looking over another show that also objectifies kids and hasn't gotten nearly enough negative attention, Toddlers and Tiaras. This show ran for nine seasons, and holy crap, it is so much worse than it's portrayed. Girls are quite literally harmed, objectified, and sometimes just flat out forced to participate in these pageants. It's sickening. Most of you know that beauty pageants are pretty common, and unfortunately, child beauty pageants are common also. For some reason, these are especially common in the South. I don't know why, but it's the South, so it makes sense. If I could summarize it, Toddlers and Tiaras is basically just trailer park trash pedo edition. It's a documentary series by TLC that follows underage girls participating in beauty pageants. Personally, I think every parent who lets their child participate in something like this is a bad person. I think TLC is exploitative by broadcasting and normalizing this garbage. And I think this is just another blatant display of underage girls being sexualized that needs to end. So today, let's go over Toddlers and Tiaras and analyze why it's one of the worst of reality TV. The episode I chose to watch began with introducing the pageant coaches and the multiple contestants, young girls ranging from the age of literally one to five years old, far too young to be doing this kind of thing. The very beginning of the episode not only depicts young girls dressed far from appropriately, but it explains just how serious these pageants have become about the appearances of these young girls, even going as far as to give them spray tans. We learned that one of the coaches won a pageant when she was two years old, which I think is kind of ironic because this woman admits that she cannot hold a relationship, and it's also pretty obvious this chick has implants in multiple places. Kind of sad that she was exposed to this type of environment as a child, and now as an adult, she's hung up on the superficial. However, it's not surprising. We also learned that this jungle pageant is approaching with a new mega ultra grand prize thing. What used to be known as the Ultimate Grand Supreme is now the Mega Ultimate Grand Supreme. Yeah, so both teams are gearing up for the competition. The first 10 minutes does a great job depicting why this show is just the worst. They spend so much money, time, and energy on training these girls to look, quote, sexy, or at least unnaturally, quote, beautiful. It's actually pretty sad because teaching girls at the age of four or five that their worth is determined by their appearance is not healthy at all. But that's what this show is all about. They get spray tans, they get hair extensions, their eyebrows are waxed, they wear an excessive amount of makeup and false eyelashes and skimpy outfits, and it doesn't even stop there. According to Good Therapy, as with adult pageants, child beauty pageants often require the child to diet in order to lose weight quickly to fit in a costume. They also go on to say that when it comes to child beauty pageants, pageants suggest to young children that there is value in focusing on their appearance as judged through the eyes of others. This can lead to significant body image distortions, and adults who once participated in child beauty pageants may experience low self-esteem and poor body image. This is a really bad environment to expose your child to, and the parents participating in these pageants are doing far more harm than good for their kid. But to be honest, I don't think a lot of these parents care. It's obvious that this is just for the parent's ego. One parent admits she spent over $2,500 on just one pageant. $2,500. While another admits she spent over $45,000 on all of her toddler's pageants. Mm -hmm. Probably around $45,000. Bye-bye college education, it seems that beauty pageants were more important. Children can't enter pageants without their parents' blessing, so involvement ultimately hinges on parental choice rather than the child's. In a new paper published in the Journal of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, University of Arizona professor emphasizes this point. She calls the phenomenon princess by proxy, explaining that the real attraction of pageants is for parents who can gain social status self-esteem, and money when their children participate. This is depicted pretty clearly when one of the contestants' moms admits that she's spent more 
on pageant dresses than she did for her own wedding dress, and even more so, she's holding off dental work because she keeps signing up for pageants. Some of the dresses they have, like I didn't even spend that much on my wedding dress. I actually have dental work that I need to get done. Like I'm not even kidding, there is a hole in my tooth right now. I haven't gone to the dentist yet because I keep signing them up for pageants. Yeah, do you think this is some kind of bold sacrifice for your child? Or do you think she's gaining social status and self-esteem by pushing her children into these events? Some of the contestants shown in the episode I watched were just so unbelievably young also. Like, this three-year-old can barely talk, yet she's getting her face caked with makeup in order to have her appearance judged. It's really gross and uncomfortable. From this point on, we meet more sassy parents and their child contestants, and we see some footage of the girls getting coached. Other than that, the episode mainly highlights just how hyper-fixated the parents and their children are on superficial, shallow appearances. In the episode I viewed, a little girl had fake eyelashes put on, which I still think is ridiculous for a five-year-old to be wearing, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. Oftentimes, the girls who participate in these pageants are subject to real physical pain. In one episode, a selfish mother forces her terrified five-year-old to get her eyebrows waxed. Ah! It's, all done. it's one thing if you're an adult willing to wax your eyebrows, it's another to force your underage child to have them done so you can win a contest. We get another clip of just how inappropriate these young girls are dressed before the coach and a mom get in some kind of a fight. Oh, the drama! From this point on, we see more training, and then we get more mindless drama. Not only is this show unhealthy, not only are the parents complete losers for doing this, we haven't even taken a deep dive into just how sexualized these poor girls really are. Obviously, we've seen how gross the costumes and the dancing are, but other episodes have gotten far worse. One 2011 episode shows the mother dressing her underage daughter in fake boobs and a fake butt. The mom is blatantly trying to make her daughter appear older and more sexual. It's absolutely nasty, but not uncommon on this show. Sexualization is the tendency to view oneself as a sex object, and children who participate in beauty pageants are sexualized very early. Children may dress in highly suggestive costumes and learn that they gain attention and status when sexualized. This may lead to premature sexual activity and can teach the unfortunate lesson that women's worth is determined at least in part by their status as sex objects. Every parent who puts their child into the world of beauty pageants are not only doing their child a disservice, it's borderline abusive. We've already established that most parents do this for their own ego, and now they're robbing their own children of their innocence. In another episode, a three-year-old was filmed dressing up as Julia Roberts from Pretty Woman. For those of you who don't know, in that movie, Julia Roberts is a prostitute. Yeah, they dress their three-year-old up as a hooker in order to win this competition. Hey, FBI, I know you're watching me right now through my webcam. Send help! Next, the contestants, their parents, and the coaches are off to Louisiana for the jungle pageant. How exciting. I mentioned the dieting earlier, but this time we see full swing just how unhealthy these girls are. Some parents put their kids on crash diets designed to help them gain energy and enthusiasm. These diets may consist solely of sugary snacks and sport drinks for several days. This can harm both short and long-term health and teaches children unhealthy approaches to food that can contribute to the development of eating disorders. And it seems this exact thing happened in the episode I watched. One of the moms has her daughter up early to get ready for the pageant, but she's acting tired and clingy, so they literally give a four-year-old Red Bull so she can get hyped for the contest. Doesn't seem healthy, doesn't seem smart, and all around bad parenting. Next, they show the pageant, and we get a taste of just how young some of these kids are. Look, this is like a one-year-old on stage being judged by her looks. Help me! Throughout the episode I watched, as a father, it made me really sad. Just watching innocent kids being subjected to this cutthroat, vile industry, largely for the parent's own ego and at the expense of the child's well-being. Despite the Red Bull, they're running late for the stage call. The mom, the coach, and the girl race to get there, but they're too late. The mom is sad, but personally, it's for the best that the kid didn't go on stage this time. If we can't compete in the pageant, I feel like, like, why? What was any of this for? Like, 
there's a lot at stake. Yeah. Like, it is, it's like, overwhelming. I agree that all of this was for nothing. Even if your kid won, it would all be for nothing. You're wasting your money and you're compromising your child's innocence for this stupid little pageant. Just stop. Get some help. Tantrums and meltdowns by children and parents alike are common backstage at beauty pageants, and long-term participation in pageants can teach children that their primary source of worth is how many pageants they win and how, quote, beautiful they are perceived to be. Learning the alphabet, empathy, social skills, athletic pursuits, and other age-appropriate activities may take a back seat in the world of pageants. All in all, this show is horrible, vile, and sexualizes children. Throughout this episode, we saw just how sexually these girls were dressed, and we saw just how much pressure is put on these girls from the parents to compete. Even if you aren't one of the parents who allows their toddler to dress provocatively, creating this environment where the most important thing for your kids is how they look through the eyes of someone else is so dangerous and sets these girls up for failure, eating disorders, and depression. Every parent who puts their child through something like this should be ashamed of themselves because it's borderline abusive and it's absolutely selfish. With the recent Netflix controversy surrounding the movie Cuties, I think the conversation about sexualizing kids needs to be taken up a notch. Yeah, Cuties was bad, but this show has been airing for nine seasons with very little moral outrage, despite the fact these girls are sexualized and sometimes even harmed in order to fit the mold of beauty the pageant demands. The fact that parents willingly sign their children up for this when they should be protecting their child from this is just sad and an indication that a lot of these pageant moms are all around shitty people. Even more so, whereas some girls seem to be excited about participating in the pageants, there are some who flat out say they just don't want to do it and their parents still force them to do it. I think even if your child wants to do something like this, it's your job as a parent to recognize the potential harms and recognize that a three, four, and five-year-old cannot ethically consent to such objectification and long-term issues. Toddlers and Tiaras was so much worse than I realized, and the fact that it doesn't even have a two on IMDb warms my cold, dead, black heart. No exceptions, this show, along with child beauty pageants in general, need to end. And the only way that'll happen is if the outrage is equally distributed, and we should all be angry whenever a child is sexualized. Wow, this crap is so gross, and the pedo shit is so nasty. I may just go full-blown QAnon at this point. Don't worry, I'm just kidding. I may have watched Toddlers and Tiaras, but I'm still too far from being trailer park trash to ever believe this QAnon crap. Well, there you guys have it. Toddlers and Tiaras, the worst of reality TV. If you have another crappy piece of media you'd like me to review, comment down below. Thanks everyone for watching. Please give this video a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all soon. Peace.